one thing you get asked to do in a logic class is to determine whether an argument is valid or not. And one of the ways we have to do that is with something called an Euler diagram. Euler right here. And Euler diagrams feel a lot like Venn diagrams to me. They're circles and we just have to see if, um, if our argument holds up, if there's only one way to draw it. We use these for arguments that have the qualified statements in it. Qualified meaning ones that have words like all or some or none in them. So here's an example. I have two. The first one, all math teachers love coffee. Angie is a math teacher. These are my premises. Therefore, right this line here we read therefore, Angie loves coffee. This is our conclusion. So what we're trying to determine is, based on these premises, right, if we draw a diagram that fits these two premises, am I guaranteed my conclusion? If I am, then I say that it's a valid argument. Otherwise, it's invalid. Okay, so we start with the first line here. It says, all math teachers love coffee. So I need to draw a picture that has that, that conveys that sentence. So you start with the last part. So I need to draw a circle or any shape, typically we do circles, and in this circle I'm going to put all of the coffee lovers, so coffee lovers. I label my circle on the outside here, kind of touching it. So coffee lovers, so all my coffee lovers go inside that circle. Um, oh, and then, okay, still in this first sentence, all math teachers love coffee. So the entire set of math teachers lives inside my coffee lovers circle. So now I'll draw another circle representing math teachers. Okay. So this, these two circles here, this diagram, is my first sentence. All coffee lovers and then all of the math teachers in the whole world live inside that. Okay. So now you can't argue with me about whether the premises are true. We're going on the assumption that these are true, and if these are true, do I get my conclusion? Okay, so now Angie is a math teacher. So where do we draw Angie in my picture? Right inside the math teacher circle, because that's what we have. So here's Angie inside the math teacher circle. So here are my premises right now. Am I guaranteed my conclusion? So if Angie is in the circle, is it also true that she is a coffee lover? And it is, right? Because by being inside the math teacher circle, she's also inside the coffee lover circle. So we would say this is a valid argument. Okay, one more. Right, probably it's going to be invalid because right, we want to show everything. So here we go. For this one, my two premises are all math teachers love chocolate. Anna loves chocolate. Therefore, Anna is a math teacher. Okay. It feels kind of like the one we did before. So let's see how it's different. So now, remember, all of our chocolate lovers go in the outside circle. All math teachers love chocolate, so all of my math teachers live inside the chocolate lover circle. Okay. So there's my first premise. Second premise, Anna loves chocolate. So now where can we draw Anna? Right, she has to be inside the chocolate lover circle, so she could absolutely be inside the math teacher circle, but she could also be out here, right? Outside the math teachers, inside the chocolate lovers. Okay, we are not we don't know where she lands, so you can live in both places. So now when I read my conclusion, Anna is a math teacher, right? It's not a guarantee. She might be, it's possible but it's not guaranteed. So since Anna can live in both places, we would say that this is an invalid argument.